Driving or walking downtown, you can't miss the imposing Hamilton County Jail. Your taxes fund everything that goes on here. This is all intake. We're all waiting for arraignment court in the morning. As you can tell, it's packed. All these people down here are going to court this morning. They're going to courtroom A for arraignment. So all the inmates are going to be funneled through here, through intake, and ultimately to go inside and see the judge. Mondays and Fridays are our busiest, but we are constantly trying to lessen the burden going to court, trying to get beds for each and every one of these inmates who are not going to be released. Index finger. I'm going to take your picture now. Look straight ahead at the camera. In the Justice Center today, we are floating right around 14 and some change. So we had 1375 in the Justice Center, but then you add in the 98 intakes. The 98 are actually going to court this morning. I, I'm sure more than half of our population has, has tried or have been addicted at one time or another to uh, heroin or opiates. We've seen a marked increase with the opiate crisis going on. It was built for half this population. Sheriff deputies must go with the flow and the overflow. We have over 120 inmates that were allowed to uh, half sleep on the floor. My first experience with that was my um, second week here. Uh, I came down to check on it myself and it looked like a refugee camp. It is the only jail in Hamilton County and uh, if we fail, the county fails. There's over uh, 40 different law enforcement agencies in Hamilton County depending on us to be able to keep our doors open to accept our prisoners. Thank you very much. You're welcome. See you later, Freddie. Yes, ma'am. Most prisoners these days are on medication, so nurses give daily meds to more than half the inmates. Hamilton County Jail is the region's largest combination hospital, mental asylum, and criminal lockup. I don't know what to expect out there. But a new approach to treating inmates here is bringing hope. I'm proud to say that instead of being a place where we warehouse people, we're actually trying to have people um, turn around so they don't come back. This is set up and this is set up and in your mind start playing that what if game. The jail now has intensive cognitive therapy sessions led by Talbert House for inmates selected for the women's recovery pod. And I've only been here a week and I love it. The, the love, the welcome, the, the classes, AOD classes. Nicole Whittemore used heroin for 18 years. We're not just a number, we're a human being. You know, we were called by our names, not just our number. From moving forward in our lives and to use some of the advantages. The second treatment program helps male veterans, like Freddie Langford. I didn't even know it existed. I just happened to be down in a pod one day and they called me and said, you're moving. You're going to the detail floor. I never knew about this. And once I got up here, I felt, oh, it's a wonderful place to be if you're in jail. This is the only pod that has the flag of the United States of America on it, as well as all the other paperwork up here. In any other pod, this wouldn't happen. This, this pod is much, much cleaner than most pods. The people in here respect each other. They respect themselves, and it shows. The difference is you got a lot of people to help you here, starting with Mr. White, the CO. Deputy White is a veteran himself. He watches inmates work hard in therapy, examining how they got here and facing their fears about getting out. And think of what is it that, that you fear most when you walk out of this door? And I can see how we would lose our kids' respect because they can just start to uh, not respect us because they always see us choosing the wrong thing over them. My fear is going back to what brought me here in the first place, and that's uh, Dylan Dope. I'd have been there before saying that I was going to get clean and uh, let people down, especially the people that love me and care about me. I'm afraid that I won't be able to do it, you know, uh, something to get in my way, and I, I'm just scared. It's a destruction environment and give them a program to get back on their feet. I think it's outstanding. Have you really seen a big difference, though? I have seen a, a difference in people not reoffending. People like Michael Kincaid. He's back today as guest speaker. I'm a recovering addict. I did not believe in recovery. I figured if I was clean, I was recovering. I wasn't using drugs. But it was something up underneath that. Being able to come through here, 
allowed me to um, look a little deeper and give me some strength to make choices. So I stay focused one day at a time on, on um, what's important, my recovery, my relationship with God, um, wanting to get some of the wreckage of the past is still in front of me out of the way, so I can become a productive citizen, which um, is, is what I'm cut out to be. A few weeks later, we caught up with Kincaid at his new job. He transports workers to and from job sites. When I was incarcerated, what I did, I made up my mind that given an opportunity, um, I was going to do my very best to be my best man. And uh, here we are today. So it is working. It's a slow process, but we do have some success stories. And you'd be surprised how much pride people take when they want to come back and help their community. So a lot of them will say, hey, do you need me to do something or can I help you with something? You know, and they, they will come in and talk to the people that are still here. Since cognitive and behavioral therapy help stop recidivism, you may wonder why the jail doesn't run more treatment programs. We're limited by the space. We're limited on how we can actually do treatment. Uh, inmates are on top of one another. We don't have an area where we can just put 50 to 100 inmates while some type of programming goes on. If we had half this population, this jail would be fine. We don't. But the good news is a $2.5 million state grant will fund a new treatment floor at the jail. The chapel will be relocated along with the GED classroom to make way for 92 treatment beds, 48 for men, 44 for women. Everything from here to the exterior walls where we'll actually install windows will be the new build-out. Deputies are tired of seeing the same old inmates watching TV and working kitchen duty. They believe that inmates who work hard in therapy have a much better shot of leaving here for good. Before you leave out of here, they tailor a plan specifically for you that can help you. And all you got to do is just follow it. And no doubt you'll be successful here. That's what I plan to do. Well, I mean, we're not just getting locked up. We're getting help while we're being locked up. We're, we're getting benefits. We're getting things to help us and improve us to make us go out there and be good citizens. It's, that's what we need. We need people to encourage us and help us more than shame us and put us down. And for everyone that is helping the taxpayers, thank you. Thank you very much.